Hi, we are going to talk about bond dissociation enthalpies. You can also replace the word enthalpy with energy, um, and sometimes you'll see it abbreviated BDE uh, for bond dissociation enthalpy. Uh, notice what I have up here. This is a table of bond dissociation. They use the word energies right here, and it will be given to you in kilojoules per mole. Now, how to read this? Um, if you see the hydrogen dash hydrogen, that is a hydrogen bond, one bond between two hydrogens. To break that, it's going to take 436 kilojoules, and that will be kilojoules per mole of hydrogen bonds. Um, notice down here, that is a triple bond, a carbon-carbon triple bond. If I have one carbon-carbon triple bond, to break that one triple bond, those six electrons being shared, that takes 965 kilojoules per mole. So you're going to have to be given a table or given a list um, in, in the question of bond dissociation enthalpies or energies. Um, and you'll just uh, notice the unit, kilojoule per mole, and, um, and the number that's associated with the bond that you're looking for. So let's do a problem together. Um, we are going to do the combustion of O2. So a couple of things to remember. This is the energy required to break bonds. How much energy we put into it to break bonds. Um, our formula for this is super important. It is bonds broken minus bonds formed. Now notice we don't use the words product and reactant. Here's the reason why. Almost everything we do in chemistry is final minus initial, like delta T, final temperature minus initial temperature. Um, if we use standard heat of formation, it is products minus reactants. Well, if you think bonds broken, that's reactants, minus bonds formed, that's products. So we don't confuse ourselves, we use different words. Is bonds broken minus bonds formed. Now something really, really important. There is a potential energy in between bonds. Yes, we know that. Students get the misconception that um, when you break a bond, it releases energy. That's not what happens. If um, bonds broke and released energy, then everything would spontaneously combust. Everything would break. It actually takes energy to break a bond, which is endothermic. So our reactions to force those bonds to break, atoms rearrange, and then when the bonds form, that's when energy is released. It takes energies to break bonds, and then when new bonds are formed, they're very stable, they release energy. So it takes energy to break bonds, right here. Reactants, it takes energy to break bonds, and when new bonds are formed, energy is released. So notice this, I'm going to attach um, this underneath here. Bonds broken, notice that is positive because it's endothermic, it requires energy. Minus, oh, negative, that's the exothermic, minus bonds formed. That's the energy that's released and it's why we subtract it. We wanna attach that negative sign the exothermic to the bonds formed. Um, and to know what this delta H is, the enthalpy for the reaction, it just depends. Does it take more energy to break bonds than the energy that's formed? In that case, you'll end up with a positive delta H. It would be an endothermic reaction if it takes more energy to break bonds. To contrast that, if more energy is released when the bonds are formed than it took to break the bonds, then the net energy is a negative exothermic. More energy was released than was required to break bonds. Now, how we do this? You have to count the bonds. So I strongly recommend draw the Lewis dot structures for all of these and then count the bonds. We're gonna be really systematic. So I am again have the combustion of methane. Let's draw methane. Now I'm going to um, show all of the bonds because we have to count them. I've got one mole of methane plus two moles of oxygen. Oops, two moles of oxygen is going to yield, I've got one mole of carbon dioxide plus two moles of water. So this is very visual. I can see every single bond. Now let's go count up the bonds. I have one, two, three, four carbon-hydrogen bonds that I'm going to have to break. 
Okay, four carbon hydrogen bonds. And then we're going to have to break two of the oxygen double bonds. And I'm going to put this whole thing in brackets. We're going to add up all of the bonds broken. That's the energy required to break those bonds. Minus, let's put brackets, the energy that's released, that's the minus, when these bonds are formed. So we're going to have one, two, two um, of the carbon double bond oxygen. We're going to have two of those that we have to break, the carbon oxygen double bond. Plus, we would be careful on this. I can see the oxygen hydrogen bond, and we've got one, two, three, four, four of those bonds to break, four of the hydrogen oxygen bond. Now, we look at the table, and I looked up these numbers for us. We look at the table, and I found the carbon hydrogen. Here it is, four, I've got four of those bonds times, uh, looking that up, it is 413 kilojoules per mole. Plus two, looked up the oxygen, oxygen double bond, and that is 498 minus two times the carbon double bonded oxygen, that's 745 plus four times the hydrogen oxygen, it's 463. So if we put all these numbers together, multiply it out, we have 100 and, uh, excuse me, 1,652 plus 996. Again, that's the total energy required to break bonds. Minus, this is going to be the energy released when those bonds are formed. Let's see, 1,852. So do this math, everything said and done, negative 694 kilojoules per mole. So here's always the big question. What did we find? What does that represent? That's our delta H. Negative 600, oops, and 94 kilojoules per mole. When we combust one mole of methane, it releases 694 kilojoules. Now it takes energy to break these bonds Energy is then released. And what that exothermic tells me is that more energy is released when those bonds are formed than the amount of energy it took to break the bonds. Pretty cool. Um, so a little word of reminder. Draw the Lewis dot structures, count every bond, and then plug it into bonds broken minus bonds formed. And if you're thinking it out, oh yeah, this takes energy, that releases energy. It'll help you remember bonds broken minus bonds formed. Good work. Thank you.